Okay. So, hey, everybody. Um, Jordan Schulman here. Welcome to late summer uh, photo chats by the not working fireplace from an undisclosed location here in sunny Chicago, Illinois. Um, we're going to talk about putting uh, putting the uh, the correct functions into the camera. So, setting up the camera the right way so that you are getting the most robust raw files that you can possibly get and that your your white balance and that your ISO are all correct. But one thing that's really, really important before any of this starts is that you got to make sure that you got your battery in your camera. Not only do you have to have the battery in the camera, you need to have it charged fully. All right. So if you've just gotten your camera, whether it's one from the school or it's your own, throw that battery on the charger and give it a nice full charge. All right. So once you get the battery in the once you get the battery in the camera, like so, turn it on to make sure that everything is functioning. All right. Test it out to make sure that it'll expose. All right. And if there's an issue, please make sure that you contact either your professor or the studio manager um, to help you swap out the, your your gear for for operating uh, for operating gear or gear that's working properly. Okay, so what we're going to do is we have the we have the DSLR here, all right, and I'm going to go through the process of getting the camera set up so that you're shooting the right file, the files have the correct information embedded in them, and so when you read your metadata in Lightroom or Photoshop or on the computer, everything is correct. So the first thing that I want to do, all right, with this is I'm going to hit Menu. Here, and you can see that it brings up all of these options. If I hit menu again, it can turn off. Up here, there's a display button. Right here, it says display. If I push display, you'll see I get the inner workings of the camera. So the first thing that I want to do is not that, um, is actually get. So the first thing that I want to do is change the mode of the camera which is done on this dial right here. All right, I want to take the can, I'm going to just take it into what's called aperture priority mode. And the reason I'm going to do this is that I'm going to check this scale that goes from minus three to plus three. It's called the EV scale. So I access the EV scale by pressing the AV button. Did you get that? EV scale is accessed by the AV button. And with that button pressed down, I'm going to use this wheel on the top of the camera here and I want to make sure that the little caret indicator is at zero. So the nice thing about having your own gear is that when you set it up, you know, your settings stay the same. When you have to use shared gear, you never know who's, you never know who's messing around with that camera before you. So you want to make sure that this in the AV mode is in, in the middle, at zero. Once that's done and zeroed out, you want to take the camera mode to M so you get manual exposure. All right, so manual exposure means that the camera, the lid is completely off. The camera is um, absolutely positively adjustable in, in, in all ways. Um, and you, uh, you are in control, you are in control of the, of the mechanism. All right, so the first thing that we want to do after we get the EV scale zeroed is we want to set the camera to manual. So it says M. So M there and then M up here. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the internal date and time is correct. So I just hit the menu button and it takes me into the menu here. Now I'm going to use the arrows on the back. So you have up, down, left, right, and left and right moves you through the functionality in the menu. All right, so I'm going to go to the, the yellow wrench right there, and you'll see it says date and time, and I'm going to hit the set button right in the middle, and thankfully, this is, this is now correct, all right, but you can see today is the 20th of August, 2020, so you want to lead with the year, so 2020, 08, 20, and then 14, 14 35, means that it's, it's 2.36, 2.36 in the afternoon, which is correct. It's military 24 hour time. All right, but you wanna have the setting be in year 
year, month, day. And that will make more sense on the back end when you're starting to bring files into Lightroom and Lightroom starts to cata uh, catalog them by year. So once you've got that set, you want to go back to your menu. And then you want to go and take the internal date and time. You've got that set. You want to set your shooting mode. So the next thing you, uh, we want to do is we want to use the back and forth, the left and right, to go through the functionalities like so. All right, you get an idea of how that works. All right, in the, in the first yellow wrench, all right, I'm going to go down to file numbering. All right, and you, you want to see, so you have file numbering, you have continuous, auto reset, and manual reset. You want to have it in continuous. You always want to have it in continuous. The reason that you want to have it in continuous is that you'll be shooting and you'll come close to filling up a card. And when that card is close to being full, you want to take one card out to put in a new one. So I'm going to just choose continuous. When you put the new card in, it continues the file count. It doesn't set it back to zero. All right. If if it starts to get set back to zero, then you're going to have a problem. If every time you change a card, it sets the counter back to zero, you're going to have multiple files from the same year with the same number. And that just creates a, a file numbering fiasco on the back end that um, will waste a lot of your time in the long run. So we want to make sure that we are, in fact, on continuous mode all the time. Once we've got that shooting mode taken care of, we want to make sure that the file size is correct. All right, so the file size is known as quality. So I'm going to go up here to quality, and you'll see that it is set as raw. Now in this, you can see this is raw plus large JPEG. There's large JPEG, large kind of large JPEG. There's medium sized JPEG. There's medium so-so JPEG. All you need is raw. Raw is the only thing that you need. All right, everything else that you could attach to that is just taking up space on your card and it's completely unnecessary. You're gonna be using rapid editing software that will allow you to, if you need to make a set of JPEGs, you can make them at any size super fast. You can make JPEGs, you can make PNGs, you can make TIFFs, the whole nine yards. So there's no reason to, to shoot anything but raw. Raw is the largest file possible. All right, it's the most uncompressed color information available to you in, a, in an image file. All right, so if I were to make a comparison between a raw file and a JPEG, a raw file would be the Great Wall of China and a JPEG would be a piece of drywall. Raw files have a color capability of 16.7 million colors. JPEGs only have 256. Given that that's the issue, the, given that that's the, so I'm gonna hit set, and given that that is in fact the case, the next thing that I want to make sure that I have set, so I'm in the second uh, red camera indicator there, is now this says color space, all right? Now, why this says color space is it's, it's, it's correct and it's not correct um, in that it's not a color space, it's a color profile. You're setting the profile that is going to be embedded into the file. All right, a color space is like this. This here is actually a color, this is a, pro, a projected color space. The screen is a projected color space. All right, the profile is what is getting embedded in, into the file. So you have two options. You have Adobe RGB, which is 16.7 million colors, and then you have sRGB, which is standard RGB, which is 256. So because you're shooting raw files, you wanna have the most robust um, color setting. So you wanna set that for Adobe RGB, all right, and so you'll, you'll be in business. You'll be making really awesome, nice, big, fat files, all right, and you'll have the software in order to back those up, all right? Once you have the color set, we need to go and we need to set how your light meter works and what your light meter sees. And so in order to do that, I need to go find the metering mode, all right? And that should be right here. Again, in the second red menu option, see where it says metering mode. All right, for your for your case uh, for your purposes starting out, you want to use evaluative, so it's taking a light reading from the entire um, scene in which you're framing up. So you, as I toggle through this, there's partial metering, spot metering, center weighted average metering, uh, metering, 
Spot metering is something you can use later on when you get uh, a little more comfortable with the camera, but for our purposes right now, we wanna set this for evaluative metering. All right, so once that's all done, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna set your white balance. All right, and so in order to set your white balance, you wanna go out of the menu, oops, go out of the menu and into the display. All right, so I clicked out on the menu here and I hit the display button on the top. And this button on the back, the arrow button that says WB, if I hold on that, it brings in the white balance um, options. All right, so like your, your, your mobile phones all have AWB, auto white balance. And so these are pretty standardized icons. So we have daylight, shade, cloudy, tungsten, fluorescent, flash, and then custom. Where we start out um, in classes, it was we start out with daylight. All right, so I'm gonna set my white balance for daylight and make sure that that is uh, the way that that's gonna be reading the light. All right, the next thing that I do after white balance is I wanna set my ISO, which is up here in the upper right-hand side. The button is on the top right here, so I push down on that and the menu there changes. Okay, so e each camera has a native, what's known as a native ISO. And the, so this is the, the sensitivity of the sensor to light. Um, depending on if you have a, cam a Canon, a Nikon, a Sony, or a Fuji, you can look up your camera online and it'll give you a native ISO. For our purposes, we wanna start at 200. So we wanna start at a lower ISO, which gives us really nice transitions through tones. It eliminates digital noise and all sorts of gnarly stuff that can show up in your camera files. All right, after the ISO is set, the thing that you need to do is you need to format your memory card. So in the side of your camera, you should have your SD memory card in there. Okay, and so what formatting does is formatting, we're basically wiping, we're wiping the, uh, we're wiping the memory. All right, we're wiping the card clean. And the rule of thumb is that whenever you start to shoot, you always wanna shoot from clean cards. All right, a, a bad habit is to just keep um, piling files upon files upon files upon files on a card because if the first thing that's going to crap out on you, it will be an SD card um, because they get a lot of wear and tear coming in and out of the camera, going in and out of the side of your, uh, of your computer and whatnot. So in this menu here, the first yellow wrench, it says format. All right. And it says format memory card. All data will be lost. So make sure that you have everything backed up all right, and I'm gonna hit, hit OK and format the memory card, all right, and it's gonna wipe the memory card and boom, the card is clean. So the last thing that I wanna do is I want to turn off my flash. So in the first red menu option, if I go down to the bottom, it says flash control, and I'm gonna go and see where it says flash firing, it's already set to disable. Sometimes it defaults to enable, but I wanna disable my flash, all right? Which means that the flash will not pop up and burst at any point. I have full control over whether I wanna be using uh, the flash or not, all right? And so once that's all set, you are then ready to start making pictures, all right? And if you're not ready to start making pictures, just do yourself a favor and turn your camera off to save those batteries. So I hope this helps, and I hope that you've been able to uh, get your camera set up. Um, it's always good to have a copy of your manual. Um, if you don't have the manual, you can always go and Google the make and model of your camera, and there are PDFs available. It's really good practice to have a copy of that PDF on your mobile phone at all times, all right? Though the cameras are similar, the settings are all different dependent on the make and model, all right? But happy shooting, and uh, I hope you really enjoy your photography class. Guys, format your card. Format your card after you've dumped everything to your hard drive. That's what it's there for. Format your card before every shoot, because if you remember our metaphor, your card is like the target parking lot on the night before 
Christmas when it gets super full and a huge SUV rolls in, it's probably going to hit other cards, AKA other photo files on your SD card. And it is going to become corrupt. You don't want that. Please, please, please format your card and make it a really wonderful new habit. You got this.